Good morning. My name is Glory Moon. It's fi Friday, February 24, 2023. And these are your morning announcement. Harrison, morning announcement. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Hi, my name is Dilek. Hi, my name is August. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now for the peace pledge. I am a peacemaker. I pledge to recognize the good that people do, to make positive choices and help others do the same. I will build peace at school, at home, and in my community every day. <clears throat> Hello, Harrison. Lunch for today will be cheese pizza, green beans, sliced peaches, and milk. Breakfast on Monday will be Crunch Mania, peach slices, and milk. Today it will be partly sunny with a high of only 36 degrees. I predict a 53% chance, 53 chance of outdoor recess for Saturday. The temperature will be like Friday, but don't expect to see the sun. The sun will fill the sky on Sunday with a higher 41 degrees. So get outside and enjoy it. For your back to school Monday, expect rain. As always, be sure to dress for the weather and make it a one for weather day. It's Harrison birthday time. There's no Harrison birthdays today. Saturday or Sunday, hopefully, we will have birthdays next week to share. As you know, February is Black History Month. Please stay tuned as some of our second grade students teach us about two amazing people. Mari is a 14-year-old from Flint, Michigan. He's known globally as Little Miss Flint. Born on July 6, 2007, she first entered the public spotlight when her letter to President Obama about the water crisis prompted him to visit the city to serve and survey the water crisis for himself. That visit ultimately led to him approving $100 million in relief for the city of Flint. Her young age has not prevented her from making an impact on environmental racism. Amanda Gorman is an American poet and an activist. She is 24 years old and she was born and raised in California. She became known for her poem, The Hill We Climb, that she read in front of millions of people during the presidential inauguration in 2021. People all over the world recognize her now. Can you imagine how scary it might be to perform in front of millions of people? Amanda Gorman shared, one of the preparations that I always do whenever I perform is I say a mantra to myself, which is I'm the daughter of black writers who are descended from freedom fighters who broke through chains and changed the world. They call me. And that is the way in which I prepare myself for the duty that needs to get done. Amanda Gorman is a change maker and she is a committed activist who works on local, national, and international levels to advocate for the environment, racial justice, and gender equality. One time she was racially profiled by a security guard near her home. She tweeted afterwards, he left no apology. This is the reality of black girls. One day you're, you're called an icon, the next day a threat. She later tweeted, in a sense, he was right. I am a threat, a threat to injustice inequality and ignorance. This is her famous poem, The Hill We Climb. It ends with, for there is always light, if we are only brave enough to see it, if only we are brave enough to be it. Please check out her children's book, Change Sings. It's amazing. I can hear change humming in its loudest, proudest song. I don't fear change coming, and so I sing along. I scream with the skies of red and blue streamers. 
I dream with the cries of tried and true dreamers. I'm a chant that wises and wings. There is hope where my change sings. Though some don't understand it, those windmills of mysterious. I sing with all the planets and its hills of histories. I hum with a hundred hearts, each of us a help lifting a, a hand. I use my strength and my smarts take a knee to make a stand. I'm bright as the light each day brings. There is love where my change sings. I sow others tolerance, though it might take some courage. I don't make a taller fence. The fight to build a better, better bridge. I talk not only of distance, from where and how we came. I also walk our differences to show we are the same. I'm a moving movement that roars and springs. There's a wave where my change sings. Change sings where? There, inside me because I'm the change I want to see. As I grow, it grows like seeds. I am just what the world needs. I'm the voice where freedom rings. You're the love your bright heart brings. We are the waves starting to spring, for we are the change we sing. We're what the world is becoming and we know it won't be long. We all hear change strumming. Won't you sing along? Now, third grade is going to tell a little bit about two more amazing people from Barack Obama was born in 1961 in Ohio. Hawaii. Obama went to Harvard University in 1980. Obama was the 40, 44th President of the United States. He was sworn into office in 2009 and served eight years. Obama was the first African American president. He was the first U.S. president to receive a Nobel Peace Prize. Obama was also the first president to use a smartphone in office. He, Obama's heroes were Martin Luther Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Mahatma Gandhi. Yolanda Renee King is a 14-year-old activist who is the daughter of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Coretta Scott King. Her parents are Martin Luther King III and Andrea Waters King. She is following in her family's footsteps by being an activist for accessibility and equality in the voting process. Her goals are to input regularizations to prevent election day challenges and to create accessibility and equality for people of color to participate in elections. She is trying to do this by getting two bills passed in Congress, the Freedom to Vote Act and the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act. As Yolanda Renee King says, although you may not be able to vote, you are the future. How can you help? Use the power of your voice and influence to move the needle of progress in your own way. And now for a special video in honor for, of Black History Month from Mr. Stormer and Ms. Bindas, featuring our preschool students. I have the pleasure to present to you Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation.
That freedom rang from Stone Mountain of Georgia. That freedom rang from Lookout Mountain of Tennessee. That freedom rang from every hill and mole hill of Mississippi, from every mountainside. Let freedom ring, and when this happens, when we allow freedom ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every state. And now for a special music tribute to Black History Month from Mrs. Grant.
of the books battlers. Please stop to in the library to get March books. This is not a we werewolf story. Our next meeting is March. Welcome to our mindfulness moment. Please find a comfortable seat in your chair, feet on the floor, hands resting on your knees or in your lap. You may close your eyes or keep them open, whatever makes you most comfortable. We will now focus our minds on kindness. Think of something you've done for someone. Maybe you helped someone in your family with something at home or you helped a friend at school. Now think of something kind someone else did for you. It could be as small as saying hello to you. How did that make you feel? Now imagine something kind that you haven't done yet, but you will the next time you have the chance. Is there something you could help or some kind words to? As we take a deep breath in and slowly open your eyes, try to remember that that kind thing you thought of when you can. Now it's time for the joke of the day. Why does a porcupine always win the game? I don't know, why does a porcupine always win the game? He has the most points. Uh -huh. Yay! I can see a bit there. So funny! <laughs> I can see a bit there.